Hello. Hello. I have a genuine Stradivarius violin. We found it in my grandfather's cupboard after he passed away, and he always told us about it. It was given to him by his uncle, you see, uh, from England. And uh, his, his uncle migrated from England to Australia in the late 1800s, so it must be genuine. So it was given to you by your grandfather from England. Look, usually those kinds of instruments end up being old German copies. Eh, hey, but it's definitely genuine. You know they make millions of copies in Germany. Uh, I'll take a look at the instrument. Yes, sure. I, I would like you to write an appraisal for $20 million, please. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, yes, it's definitely uh, an old East German mass-produced instrument. It would have been made in the late 1800s. Anyway, it's not German. It's, it's a Stradivarius. You know, it, it, it bears the genuine Stradivarius label from 1760. You do know that Stradivarius died in 1737, don't you? But not this one. My grandfather said. Do you think that you found a Stradivarius violin in your attic or have you had a violin in your cupboard and thought it was a Stradivarius? I used to get one call a week at least of someone who had found a Stradivarius violin in their attic or in their cupboard or in their grandfather's house or grandmother's. In the late 1700s, early 1800s, there was this much larger middle class and they were interested in music. And it's actually part of the reason that music flourished so much in the classical period, because suddenly people were able to afford to go and see concerts. It wasn't just the aristocracy that could go and see concerts. There was suddenly this middle class, but they also really wanted to learn instruments and make music, but they couldn't afford the master instruments. You, They couldn't afford the instruments that the violin masters made, master violin makers made. So in Saxony, uh, in near Magnarkirchen, which is an area called Falkland in Germany, they started mass producing instrument. Oh, but it's definitely genuine. First they started doing it in Mittenwald in the late 1700s, but then this other area which had had a lot of problems with poverty because of the 30 year war. Uh, they used to be an iron ore producing area, but that um, that all somehow stopped. And so there was high unemployment and they brought violin making into that area or musical instrument making into that area. And they quickly started to establish themselves as a dominant violin making place in the world. In the early 1800s, they were already producing 20,000 instruments a year in that area. And by the time it hit the early 1900s, it was hundreds of thousands of instruments a year. Actually, at that time, close to 90% of all violins made in the world were actually made in this little area. And uh, they basically got exported everywhere to England, to Italy, to America, to Australia, all the, through all the English colonies and, and other places. Because if you wanted to listen to music in the late 1800s or early 1900s, you either had a gramophone or you made your own music. Radio wasn't invented yet, so, you know, if you wanted music, you had to make it. So violins were really popular because they were quite portable. And so they were mass produced in Germany in the Falkland region and shipped all over the world. Uh, there are some old advertisements uh, for instruments that were shipped to Australia in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And they were actually, you know, some of the instruments were quite well made. Others were really terrible. Like you look at the insides of those instruments and they are shocking. Very similar to some of the Chinese instruments that we're seeing today. We're seeing some really high quality instruments, but also some really badly made instruments that don't have a very good sound. Uh, this particular instrument here is actually one made in the Saxony region in the late 1800s, very early 1900s. It'll probably, once restored, it'll probably end up being quite a nice instrument. And uh, quite often I'll do some of the work inside. So it's nice to kind of own a piece of history as well. You know, you have this instrument that's, you know, between 100 and 130 years old, which is really lovely. So there are basically millions of these instruments around. But some of them can end up quite nice, like this Hermann Dölling violin. 
you know, there are other great makers. Um, Ernst Heinrich Roth is one of the better known makers from that area. But they tend to need a lot of work. So Hopf is another fairly well-known brand from that area. They're, they were quite old. They were from the mid-1800s. Anyway, it's not German. It's, it's a Stradivarius. My grand uncle's from England, and, and, and it must be genuine. Oh, I'll just go to another shop. Well, they will write me a, an appraisal for $20 million. I've had enough. Goodbye. Okay, see you later. Good luck. If you like my videos, press like, and remember to subscribe to be the first to find out when I've posted a new video.